All right, Glenna Teeve. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like the sky. <coughs> good sky, nice stopper on the left, and a good shape to the image with, with the, the hills here. Um, can you all hear me? That's a straight you can. Can you all yeah. see what I'm doing? Or do you want me to yeah. move across? <laughs> I, I won't do it anyway. <laughs> I think our system would be better off this side. Um, it looks a lot better here than it did on my screen. It's a bit more, on my screen it was a bit flat. Um, and, the, and this was a bit bright. It's less bright here, but nevertheless, it still does the same sort of job in that it takes your eye away from here, which I think is the, uh, is the, the subject, what you intended me to look at. And it takes my eye right down here to this very bright spot around here. So I'm looking down here into the, uh, into the grasses, and it is a bit distracting. And I think you could quite easily have uh, darkened this area down and made it a sort of even tone with the rest of the grasses so that it doesn't distract too much. So Glen Achieve gets 17. Yeah. Carolyn Phillips! This is called The Other Side, and it's it's a flip, so we've, uh, we've got this, we've got this scene here flipped both vertically and horizontally, uh, and I'm afraid it doesn't really work for me. Yeah, there's lots of textures and detail here, and this line is quite distinctive, but you can see there that reflects this bit here. Um, I think I could see, yes, we've got the piling there, reflected there. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be telling me. As I say, it doesn't work with a very bright patch here, which isn't reflected back down there. Uh, and I just couldn't make uh, too much sense of it. So unfortunately, it's got 12. Yeah, one of the one of the things you can do, I think, if you're doing Photoshop, this as it is here, this is really quite dark. There is texture there, uh, and there is uh, uh, and there is shape to it as well. the The contrast is basically between the, the the sky here and these trees, and in Photoshop or even Lightroom. In Photoshop, you use Camera Raw. In Lightroom, you just use the normal adjustments. But if you go to, I think it is, if you, if you go to the, the highlight slider and move that right down to the left so that you, you sort of block out, you, you take the highlights down, go to the shadows and take that to the right so that you're lifting the shadows, then go to the white slider and move it to the right just so it starts to clip and take the blacks down so that that just starts to clip and this one starts to sing. It brings out all the contrast there is in the image itself. And you've got some great uh, um, tones in here from blacks in these trees to going through all the greys and it brings out the texture within the clouds in the sky as well. So you've got interest all the way through. Just a, a quick tip, because I, I think it does this one particularly proud. And that is Rydal gets 16. Stephen Worrell. And again, if you do the same trick here, you get great, great textures coming out of this sky. I think you've done very, you, you were up the right place at the right time. You've got this storm coming through. You've got lots of drama in this sky. And you've got two figures to anchor yourself in the middle of the picture. And that works very well. Um, I'm not too sure about this, this bright foreground here. <laughs> and perhaps, 
uh, a, uh, a crop just to remove that. So that we, we're concentrating on this very dramatic sky and we're, we're sort of locked into the picture by these two figures here. That works very well indeed. I'd shoot the bird, by the way, because <laughs> it is a bit distracting. Um, so, Sculpture by the... Is it Sculpture Bay Butte? Yeah. That gets 16. John Spatter! <laughs> uh, natural textures, yes, you've got the tree, the leaves, Few grasses down here, quite a bright spot around here, which is taking me out. But it's this boy here. It really takes my eye and my attention. And I end up looking at that simply because it's a, a, a very high contrast uh, bit of a place, <coughs> image stuck in the middle of this, 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 this black water. Uh, and this is a bit bright as well. But the, my main problem is, because there is no other centre of interest, that's what I'm actually looking at. And I think we need something a bit stronger within the, the main picture here to keep us, uh, uh, to keep us uh, looking at the trees and into the centre of the picture rather than at the end. Now, that could be a darker figure or whatever. Uh, a dead sheep in the Lake District. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it does need something else there, so... Natural Textures gets 30. You are an inventive lot here, <coughs> uh, and I quite like this as a pattern. Uh, yeah, we've got lots of light around here. Uh, with the textures within the sounds as well. You've got a bright light up there. I'm not quite sure that that adds anything, but we've got a footprint here, stuck in the corner, which sort of takes us down here because the, the, main, uh, the main center of interest is here, uh, where the bright area is. And that's where I'm looking. And then we've got this intriguing footprint here. No other footprint, just the one. So either the one-legged man, <laughs> or he's walking in the same in the same place. There are a few less distinct footprints there, and yeah, I think it works quite well. I'm not sure about these the, the darker bits around here. I think perhaps a bit of cropping would have helped a little bit, but um, light on Gary Beach gets 16. Steve Weatherly. <laughs> Are we holding back or do you just want me to score as we go through? Um, holding back. Yeah, yeah, I'll score. Score as you go. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay, score as we go. Yeah, yeah. This is Lone Tree and it's a silhouette uh, against, um, against this, this mountain of background. Yeah, you've got a bright bit on the lake uh, and you've got a bright bit on the sky here. Um, I think it works very well indeed. Uh, the silhouette is, is very pronounced all the way through. Um, perhaps a bit, the, the texture on the water is a bit on the uh, on the rough side, perhaps a, a bit of blurring on there would have sort of, sort of matched to the sky, would have helped the wee bit. But it's very dramatic. There's no doubt what the subject is. And it, uh, and it worked very well indeed. So that gets 18. This uh, worked again very well. There's lots and lots of textures, and had you done that trick I, I spoke about earlier, it does bring out the textures an awful lot in this. Um, and I like the design of, of this uh, of, of this picture here. It, it is very graphic. We've got lines coming down here, leading to this central point here. Uh, not too sure about this bit of wall, I think you could have cropped that. But the, then you've got the horizontal lines here, 
Then you've got some bloke in the buff there. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but I'm glad he's there because he sort of balances this, uh, this, this stone here. The pair of them and the door make quite a strong triangular uh, composition there in the middle. So you've got the lines, you've got the triangle, and it works very well and gets 19. A nice view for right for resting. Uh, yeah, the view is great. I think you've got you've got lots of textures and the bags of sunshine here, but I think the the subject, the main bit, which is this grave here with its uh, with its fence and trellis around it, it's the daffledness makes it very busy indeed, uh, and. It sort of takes my eye and my attention. Uh, well, it doesn't capture my eye and my attention because what I'm looking at is this very bright area here and the trees and the scenery behind it. And I feel as though I should be looking here. So I would have darkened that down a wee bit, but we've still got the problem of the contrast within this area here. Having said that, the composition should work because that occupies the center there's plenty of detail there, there's plenty of textures. It's just, I think, this sky is just a bit too dominant. And so I've given uh, a nice view for resting 16. Peter Kay! <laughs> Stellatites and stellatites. Yeah. You've got a nice bright area here with all the. Uh, all the bits coming down. It's tights. It's tights that come down, isn't it? And, and the other, the mics go up. Uh, I think there, uh, again, that sort of takes you down there. That is a bright bit. I'm not sure that it's absolutely necessary and I'd have cropped it down there. Then I'd have increased the contrast to bring out some of the blacks in here so we get full range of tones in here. But it is quite a pleasing composition that you've managed to get. Uh, yeah, these two highlights work. You've got the uh, the ups and the downs going very well indeed. Uh, it's sharp enough throughout. Uh, and I think this whole area here is quite adequate for a centre of focus. Nothing much more to say. I think it's it's a good picture and it gets, that's how it gets 18. Mandy Foreman. Dark side of the moon. Yeah, this this has a lot of potential, but I don't think it's coming through. I'm not too happy with the the sunburst here because uh, that is taking you right out to the edge of the frame, and it takes you away from this area here, which I think is the main subject. So I think we need a bit more detail around here. And we've got very, very dark rocks in the front. I mean, they are dramatic, but they're black. There's not a lot of information there, apart from this bit here. And then we've got a bright bit there, sort of reflecting that bit. Um, and I think, basically, you need to go to the, a bit of dehazing, and you need to do that, to, I said, said before, to bring out some of the textures and the detail of, the, of these rocks. Because it is quite a dramatic scene, but it's, it's really quite flat, uh, apart from that area and these black rocks here. And I think that is the area of the picture that needs to be brought out. And I'm pretty sure you can do it uh, with a bit of uh, uh, with a bit of jiggery pokery in Photoshop. But Dark Side of the Moon gets 15. Tony Pickard. <laughs> The ship. Uh, yeah, we've, there's no doubt what the subject is here. It's these two, it's this statue uh, with the, the two figures stuck it's one in of the other uh, and the other. Quite a background, but quite a bright background. So we're, we're ending up with a getting towards a silhouette, but not quite. I think 
uh, what it needs is a bit of cropping on this side because there's not a lot of information down here and perhaps a, a, a bit of cropping down that side to put it more central. And in fact, I think a square crop would have emphasized <coughs> the figures all together. Uh, and in, while you're doing it, there's not, there is texture here there are, and it is grass, but I don't think it adds an awful lot. I think we need to concentrate on this area uh, to get the information out of the, the, the statue itself and to make that stand out. It, it does stand out, but it, it's getting lost in all this detail around here. So the ship gets 15. Make the Yes, so here we've got a really dramatic sky, you know, a fantastic sky, and uh, you can use that time and time again, it can still work. Um, we've then got the composition of very strong horizontal lines here, and then the lines of the, the, uh, in the plowed field itself all going to a vanishing point somewhere around there. And the, the lower part works very well indeed, as does the, the clouds in the, in, in the sky. Uh, I think, again, a crop, these aren't really adding very much uh, to, to the, uh, the image itself. Uh, I don't think they're distracting too much, but uh, crop, crop them up, even it up a bit, perhaps to get that a bit more central and you've got a really crocking picture coming along there. As it is, I'm giving it 18. <laughs> Silverdale Cove, that's the, that's the subject. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on around here. Um, the, the tops of these, uh, of these, trees I take it now, these twigs, it's a bit bright, so it gives it, it looks like a giant hedgehog there. But, I mean, it, it, it is probably as it is, but there's an awful lot of the frame which doesn't have an awful lot of information in it. So I would, yeah, if you want to keep this in here, I'd have cropped it down there, and then <coughs> increase the contrast around this area, because I'm looking at the code quite like the trees against the, uh, silhouetted against the skyline, but that is the center of attention and I really need to be looking at that and picking the detail out of that. Uh, you've almost got the black and white right, bit bright around here, and, and I think a bit of darkening down overall of the sky, so that this becomes the brightest bit is needed as well. So Silverdale gets 16. Right, Yeah, uh, winter wilderness. I take it this is snow because there's absolutely no information in this area at all, nothing. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why it's in. And again, the sky is a typical winter sky, uh, probably slab gray. Uh, there is no detail in that area either. So we've got at least, I'd say, two thirds of the image of, of the frame, which has absolutely no information in it whatsoever. And what information we do have is a bit blocked out uh, and, and a bit sparse. We've got the, the texture given by the rocks poking through the, the snow, and we've got the shapes of the trees, but they're just a clump. So I really think you need to you need to think what this picture is telling the viewer. The answer is it's telling them it's got a lot of white in it, and um, and that's about it. Uh, and so that gets twelve. Again, someone with a good eye for a sky, and you've captured this well. Uh, again, uh, it looks to me like a, a, a wide angle lens because you've got lines coming up through here, a vanishing point roundabout there, which is emphasized by the sky as well. Perhaps a little bit over-processed 
it, certainly in this corner, but nothing too drastic at all. I just love the drama of this, and perhaps a, I don't know about that. that that's a matter of taste whether you uh, whether you leave that in or crop it out. Um, <coughs> I would like to have seen a bit more contrast here, a bit more light, and perhaps just lifted those shadows a bit, because that is the centre of, of, of your attention, and this black area here, particularly with the, the blocked out bits, just needs that little bit of lifting to keep your eye where it's supposed to be, which is in the centre of the frame. So winter wilderness, and I'll pop into a rock pile, get 17. Keith Taylor! <laughs> Feels uh, a bit of threshold here. It's quite graphic, and I do like graphic pictures. Um, but here, I think you've, you've missed a trick because you've got a you've got a composition which will drag you through the trees here and down there. Mm -hmm. So you've got a nice S-shaped composition if it wasn't for this bit down here. Um, so I would have cropped the whole of this bottom bit off and we could then concentrate on these lines. Uh, but having said that, again, there's a lot of, it's black and white because it's been, I think it's had threshold applied. It does need more detail and it needs something somewhere to say what the center of the image is. I think it's something around, something around here. And so perhaps a bit more, uh, a few more tones around the trees in this area and this, uh, and this bit would have put, held your eye in the, uh, uh, in the center of the frame. If you're doing things like this, I think it, it's really quite inventive, and I applaud you for doing it. But it, I think you've got to have something else other than just the, the, the posterization that goes with it. You need something to to really grab the interest. So Fields gets 13. Sinabungi Rups. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? It's really on the go. Um, great picture down, great tones down here, particularly the, the blacks of these trees. And I like this plume, this, this, this bit of the arch, all this, this dust coming down. Uh, I think that, that's very dramatic. And the dramatic clouds as well. The problem is, I, I don't know whether this was on the scene or not, but there might well have been a lot of dust in the air due to this. Uh, uh, eruption and that has tended to flatten the the mountain and the uh, and the smokestack and a bit on the sky uh, and a bit on the uh, on the sky as well. And had you moved the haze filter, if you used the haze filter and just moved it a bit to the right, you'd have got some great tones coming here because the dehaze filter actually takes out this this dusty look by adding more contrast into the into the image. And you do get a lot more drama out of here because you get blacks and whites and, and it really does stand out. Well, I think this bit at the moment is just that bit too flat. There is detail there. It does need bringing out. So Cinnabon erupts get 17. Dan Johnson. <laughs> Complete with Pike. Uh, yeah, uh, a good image of, of this well known spot. Uh, again, I'd have made it just a little bit blacker and whiter. Uh, the sky there keeps you in the middle here. I think you need a bit of a vignette around, particularly down this end, to stop you going out because of this bright area around here. Uh, there is plenty of detail, perhaps a bit of a bit of sharpening or whatever, but that works very well. It gives you a good feel, particularly as you're looking down this valley here, and you can see the, uh, the you can see the hills beyond, and you've got the roughness of the rocks all the time, and you've got this path around here, all of which adds to the uh, adds to the scene, and this path takes you into the, the centre of the picture as well. So uh, just a bit of a a, a vignette just to stop you coming out to the left would have improved that a bit. 
uh, as it is, I've given it nine two. Ruth Lockery. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can see what you were after here because you've got a line of trees across here and you've got a line of trees coming down here. So you've got a bit of a triangular <coughs> composition coming in there. The trouble is I couldn't find anywhere that was actually, which was actually, which was actually sharp on the picture. It's, it's just a bit soft everywhere from what I could see. I think you've got textures here which work, but I think you need a bit of sharpness in this tree here in particular because you need something in the foreground to sort of anchor you and then I think you need to, to let the sharpness drop off as you go up here and drop off as you go up there as it is at the moment there's, it's all equally soft and I think you do need something to, to pin your attention in the, uh, in the frame and to give you something to look at. Uh, a bit of um, I'd like to see a bit of drama in the sky because we've got this white bit here, this white bit there, uh, and the eye flicks between the two. And without the, the sharpness in the image to, uh, to give you something to look at, you flick between one and the other, one and the other constantly. And so behind Grasmere it gets 13. <coughs> Desert of the Lakes, again, it's a bit flat. There's not a big variation in tones there. There's a bit of black there and a little bit of white in the clouds. It does need a, a fair bit of contrast going into it. And that is reasonably easy to, uh, to do in, in part of the processing. Just got to watch out that this, that this black uh, area here doesn't get too deep. And to, do, and to cure that, I crop that down as well. But if you put a bit more contrast in, you bring out the tones, you bring out the, the textures, uh, and you bring out the, uh, uh, the, the shape and forms of these fields as well. It's just too flat at the moment. And Desert of Lakes gets 14. Guardian Rock overlooks the pass. Um, yeah, I quite I like this because you've got uh, you've got this which this pillar of rock, which is which is the subject. It dominates everything, uh, and and it dominates a sort of gateway down the valley here. Um, yeah, you've got not too you've got texture in the grasses. You've got texture in the rock itself. I think that needs darkening down a wee bit because it's a bit brighter than the rock at the moment. But I think that works very well. Again, there is texture in the sky, and you could bring that out a wee bit, but it doesn't matter because I think this uh, this rock has got plenty of interest in it. I mean, that looks like an eye in a mouth. You could, you could say it's a, a fish sticking out or something if you were fanciful. But yeah, I think that works very well indeed. And black and white suits it. Um, and I gave the Guardian 19. Get the rock. Norfolk, very flat Norfolk. Um, yeah, there was a caveat I think put on your images, the landscape about uh, some. Uh, about it being about the landscape and not about people or things in the landscape. And I think this is just about passed over the line because the centre of interest of this uh, of this image is this figure here. Uh, it's, it's there alone uh, among this, this very flat, bleak landscape. And the other thing is this man-made object here. Uh, which looks like a sluice, I think, I'm not too sure. But that is the picture. I think that's why you took it, not this flat, uninteresting bit of countryside around it. There's not a lot in the sky either, so 
do we need that much of the sky? I mean, it, that might be Norfolk to you because it's, it is the county of big skies, isn't it? And there's an awful lot of sky there with not a lot of information. But it's this figure, I think, which is at the center of the picture. Uh, and I think it comes outside of the scope of your definition of scape, of landscape, and that and this man made structure. So, unfortunately, Norfolk gets 12. Bamborough, very much photograph scene, so you've really got to work hard to get anything decent from Bam Bamborough. Uh, I like the fact that you've got this. Uh, the, the, the grasses in the foreground, which hold quite a lot of information, they're quite sharp, and so it holds you down into the, into, into the frame and forms a very good foreground indeed. You've got a bit of, uh, a bit of detail on this side of the, uh, of the sky, and then you've got a white area to sort of, uh, to sort of highlight the castle against. And the sky comes down there, and you've got a line coming up here, all of which point to the castle. So the castle is in exactly the right position. Uh, and I know it's a man made structure, but it's been there for so long, it's part of the landscape. Um, yeah, a bit bright around here. I'd like to have seen a bit more, uh, a bit more definition uh, in terms of texture around there. But that works very well, very well thought out in terms of its composition, and the black and white works fine. So Bamber Castle gets 18. Tina Gordieu. <laughs> yeah, sky's great. Uh, this foreground is a bit light, so go from sky to this light foreground. I don't think the trees here add very much either, so I would have cropped that lot out and then we've got the, the picture which is this hill here and this hill with its um, with, with the trees on it bit of texture around there again uh, you've got great um, contrast in the sky and you've really brought out the textures and the feeling of that sort of uh, uh, that you get with the sky it's, it's obviously one of those days where it's it, it's not made up its mind whether it's going to rain or clear up nice and clear there, but these look a bit threatening, don't they? And I think taking that out, and perhaps taking this side of the image out as well, because it's a bit soft as well. So overall, I think it needs a bit of sharpening and a bit of trimming down to show us where to look. That's obviously where we've got to look, but I think you need to concentrate on that centre just a bit more. And so a view from Sugar Hill gets 15. Phil Allman. Burnside, yeah, uh, here we've got this, this terrific cloud and it's very, very threatening indeed. And then you've got the, uh, uh, you've got the rain coming down here onto this, uh, onto this very bleak hillside here. And you've got that, uh, so you've got a, a highlight deep in this corner, which is balanced by this highlight here. And it works. It works quite well. It could work better if you've done that trick I told you before and really get the blacks and whites coming out here. It does make it very, very much more dramatic. Um, you were obviously out there in the rain when you took this photograph um, and it works for you very well indeed. It's, it's quite simple. You've got the composition is these lines down here to here and then they, these straight lines across there. Uh, and it's joined by the streaks of rain coming down uh, down from the top to the bottom. And it works very well. And so, uh, Wernside gets 17. Here's dear Alton. <laughs> St. Kilt. Yeah, again, it's a, it's a one with a lead in, and I think that's that's the central bit. And I'm not going to complain about it being man-made, because 
and it's shown to be man-made, but it's been destroyed by nature. So it's a virtually a natural feature in, in my interpretation. I'm not sure that this foreground works very well. It's about a third of the frame and there's not a lot of interest in it. So I would have cropped down there and perhaps cropped this side of the, uh, of the frame out as well. So that we're ending up with this, the end of the line of houses finishing about there uh, and perhaps taking a bit off the sky as well. And then I think it needs a bit of contrast to bring out the textures uh, and the uh, and the tones within the, the, this area because it is a bit flat. But it would, I know it works uh, if you do that. So St Kilda gets uh, 16. John Kent. Canyons of static. Yeah, uh, this is one that puzzled me for quite a bit. I like this line, this S-shaped curve of very bright light snaking its way from the corner where it should start up into the main picture. Uh, very dark on this side, not a lot of information. So I would have snaked it round to much closer to the uh, to, to a corner up here to give it a very dynamic, uh, a very dynamic composition, and perhaps finished it round there. When I looked at it on my machine, there was a lot of detail in there as well, uh, and that could be lifted. I'm not quite sure why you blacked it out so much because there are little specks of highlights around here, which would which make it just a bit more interesting. I don't want them as bright as this bit, but it just makes, it asks some questions about what's there and why it's there. At the moment, because of the lack of, uh, of any real detail, there is some detail there, but because of the lack of any re real detail, you keep on asking the question, why is it so dark? When there is obviously something there. Um, but that works quite well indeed, as I say, I like that composition. So, static, sorry, what, what was it? Mm -hmm. So, canyons of static get 17. Tom Hardy! Oh, yeah, small on birch. Um, it's almost. I'd say almost a uh, an IR picture, an infrared picture. I think it might well be because all the foliage here is white, uh, but the, the main bit are these what are the white uh, branches and uh, trunk of these birches. And I think that the whiteness is sort of complemented, evening it out all the way through. A bit more blackness in the sky would have helped a bit. I think a crop around there and perhaps down there. So we only have two trees and not the third one there, which isn't really adding very much to it. Uh, and again, if you do that trick I, I said earlier, this starts to sing. It really, the, a higher contrast really brings out the detail and the drama in this scene. And because it's infrared, I think you've gone for the drama between the, the greens and the grasses and the darkness of the skies. But it still works very well, and I've given it 19. Mike Atkinson. And this leaves Gordale Scar looking upstream. Bags of detail here, and it does look threatening. I really, I really like this. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of the contrast in the frame. You've got lots of contrast in here, just highlighting the textures, uh, lots of, of, of interest around here, no area of any even tone, not even in the sky. Uh, and you get a real feel for the place, whereas you've got very sharp foreground here, and the sharpness can continue right the way into the picture. So you can go in, seeing all the detail that you want, picking out little bits uh, to, to help you make uh, it made your mind about the picture. I think that's an excellent shot, and that gets 20. Chris Jones! Mm -hmm. 
I think your colour images were generally of a higher standard than the monochrome, so this gets a wee bit more difficult. So, uh, October Reflections. It's, uh, yeah, it's a reflection photograph, and it's almost the reflection line is halfway down the uh, uh, halfway down the frame. So top half and bottom half are reflected. A bit more colour saturation in the bottom half. Uh, not the general rule of thumb is don't do it uh, at, at halfway. Uh, either make it two thirds of the way up and that will be a crop across there or, or make it the other way around and crop the bottom bit. So to, to make it less symmetrical because you've got a very very symmetrical uh, reflection here and apart from the, the blues uh, the scarlet the, the light blues here and the whites of this this cloud in the corner these houses here are the brightest bit of the frame and that's where it, you end up looking so and because of this very strong dividing line it's it really flattens the composition altogether. And I think either taking the top off or the bottom off would help, uh, would help uh, as well. Um, it's really where do you look apart from here? Because although you've got the colours here are, are, are absolutely <laughs> fantastic, the, the resulting colours, the greens and, and the oranges and the browns, but they don't really form a pattern. That, that you can concentrate on, that, that really takes your eye. Uh, and you go back to these, these, these two rows of buildings along here. I think it needs something else in there to hold your attention and to hold you in the middle of the frame. So October Reflections gets 14. Conway. This is one where I, I deliberated quite a bit because on your own rules, uh, the man-made stuff hasn't got to be central. It's a landscape which has to be, which has to hold its own and the man-made bits are only supposed to be incidental. But here, I've let that go because really the picture is about the castle, isn't it? It's about the castle in the landscape and I think that works quite well uh, so I've actually treated the castle and maybe these, uh, and, uh, and these buildings around it as part of the landscape. I think you could have cropped that off without losing too much and then you've got, uh, you've actually got the castle in the landscape as well. You've got some great colours coming up here, you've got the greens uh, and reds in there and they're, they're sort of matched by what the colours you've got within the buildings themselves. Nice blue sky way up there, and then you've got detail in the clouds coming as you come towards the horizon. And there's a sort of recession as you go through because there's a bit of mist, that sort of summery day misty look as you go up through uh, towards the top of the hills. And I do think that the blue works quite well it's a sort of, because it's darker and it keeps your eye coming down here and because that's where the detail is, that's where you're looking at, uh, it, it's at the castle itself. So I've excused that because it's so old. Uh, so come when you get 17. Go on, Philip. Yeah, the end is nigh. <laughs> yes, global warming. Uh, I think this is much better on this screen than it was on mine. This was very blocked up. In fact, I couldn't see the detail along here. Uh, this is still too blocked up, so I had to crap there. And the big problem, I, it, the big problem really, is this big burnt out sunny bit here. 
because that's where you go straight up there because that's that's the brighter bit so even if you crop that bit and then you've got this as the brightest bit of the frame and that keeps your eye down at this level of the uh, of the of the frame and then you've got all these great textures of the cloud and this sort of <coughs> threatening look that you have on the, the cloud and that color really does sort of give you that doom laden feeling doesn't it I don't know whether that's what Arn Sides Arn Side is famous for but it's what I like to look at and so Arn Side not is going to get 17. John Hawking! <laughs> Another reflection picture, and yet again, another one where we've divided the frame almost in two. And so you get, again, a sort of repetition of top and bottom. Now there's lots and lots of detail in here. In fact, it's very busy indeed, because you've got the, you've not only got the, the bare trunks and branches around here, uh, you've also got the, the detail of the, the leaves here reflected in, in the water and you've got a sort of shimmer on the water. The blue is fantastic. And so, but it is busy, so it needs paring down a bit. So you can either do it two ways. You could either, as I said, I, if I was going to do it horizontally, I'd have cropped it from about there and put the emphasis on the reflection because you've got these great contrasts between the blues and the reds and the oranges and these white birches. Uh, shining through or you could crop it that way and so you would emphasize the the sort of tallness of the trees here and, and, and the length of the reflections and get rid of the busyness on this side and the busyness on that side and concentrate on uh, these two particular trees as part of your uh, as your main subjects particularly as around here that would then make that the brightest part of the picture. So I think uh, a bit of reworking is needed there, and that gets 16. <clears throat> Mike Atkinson. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you can pronounce it out if you wish. Um, this works, this is another reflection, but because the reflection lies down there on the third, this works very well. Now, when I was talking, when I started off with the, uh, the monochrome, I said the technique of moving the highlight slider to the left, the, the, uh, uh, the shadows to the right, and then just making sure that the whites and the blacks are just starting to clip. And when you do that, this one becomes wonderful. You get some great, uh, great contrast coming out here and the, the, the sky, the detail in the sky is really light up and you bring out a lot of colours in this area as well. There is a lot, a lot of potential there to make this a very good landscape indeed because of the, the differences you've got in the lighting. The lighting is terrific, particularly this part here. And I think you need to concentrate on that. That is the centre of the picture, not that. So you bring that up and you take that down and then you get all the greens and browns and, and, and oranges surrounding this mountain here and it really does seem, it does need that bit of work on it and I'm going to give that 17. Fraser Coleman! <laughs> oh, this is a beaut. I really do like this. The colours are fantastic. You've got some really deep, saturated colours <coughs> in the yellows of the grasses here uh, and the greens of the trees. And then you've got these almost pastel shades as you go into the recession of the hills in the background. Uh, I'd have been tempted to uh, crop there uh, because it is a bit brighter. I want to be concentrating on, on, on this area here. And you've got quite a bright area here to, to bring you down. So I don't want to be flicking between there and there. Um, but I, I like the fact that you are going there and you're getting a bit bluer as you go back. That shows the recession. 
But it's here, I think, the, where the, the true uh, uh, the true beauty lies, because those colours, are, although it is busy, they're great chunks of colour, the sort of thing that an artist would use to, to, to depict uh, foliage, that because there's no real form to them, they're just, they're just blobs of colour around. I think that's fantastic. And I'm going to give it 20. Kirsty Rangers! Into the clouds. I take it this was, I'm going to guess that this was taken out of an airplane window. Because uh, it, it's, it's a bit blue here. Uh, and I would have thought, had this been in, uh, had you been on top of another mountain looking out, it would have been a, a, a bit blacker. So you've got this blue here. You can still take this blue out, because I think it does need a grounding along here of, of the colour of the mountain, which I think is going to be black rock. Uh, and I think you need a bit more emphasis on the, uh, uh, of the texture of these clouds, just to make them a bit more a uh, little bit dark and make them a bit threatening. That one looks quite threatening. These look quite friendly, really. You fly into them, I think, probably. Um, so I think you need a bit more contrast around it. It is very monochromatic, <coughs> except being black and white. It's a bit blue and white, which is a bit off-putting. So tip the blues down, a bit of um, uh, white balance, perhaps, would, would correct a lot of what I've been saying. But uh, into the clouds gets 15. Monday forward. Right, Morecambe Bay. Again, a landscape with a man made thing, and that is absolutely central to this composition. Uh, that's why, that's what we look at. We've got this uh, setting sun, or I take it it's a setting sun. We've got this bright sunlight across here. And then we've got the boat, and we're looking at the boat. So a lot of this side of the, uh, of the light isn't really adding an awful lot to the picture. This is in silhouette, so there's no detail in it. So a crop just around there, but that would put the boat uh, that will put the boat on about a third, which I think is where it should be. But it's your rule. I don't know what to do about it. Uh, no man-made object, because that is that is the uh, uh, that is the subject. There's no doubt about it. It's not this streak of light here. The colours work, and I think the composition works given that crop. But does it work with your rules? Um, I'm going to give it 40. Because I've got a far worse dilemma coming up in a minute. <laughs> Silverdale Forest. Now, if you, uh, again, if you do that trick, I've, uh, I've, I've spoken about it twice. This bit of the scene really jumps out. You start to see a lot of detail in this area in particular and in that area. But it really, and then that gives you a bright white sensor which keeps you in the middle of the frame. It really does become, A, it becomes sharper because of it, but it also becomes a bit more ethereal because of the, the, the colors uh, blend together a bit more, but you get the detail coming out of here. And my main, my main, um, having done that, I think you still need something in this area, in this light area, to keep you in there. And, and again, it could be anything. Uh, a horse, a dog, a, a backpack, or just something to, just something to, for your eye to sit on and, and, and sort of arrest your interest. Uh, but the colours are excellent. And I think the treatment around this area, given that bit of contrast, Generation of so is up again excellent. So I'm going to give it 16. Right, Chief. <laughs> right, this is the dilemma I was talking about. 
because crop that off, forget about that. But if you didn't have these people and these boats, you wouldn't have half the photograph because these lines, the composition here, these lines are flowing, the water's flowing here and down there, and you've got this triangle then on these boats, uh, which actually hold the attention. If you don't have this there, I don't think this picture would have worked nearly as well because it really gives you some points of focus to look at. And the swirls here are a bit uh, Van, Van Gogh's, aren't they? Starry, starry night and all that. But you've got this, uh, you've got this flowing greens flowing back here with the yellow. And I think it works very well indeed. And so I'm going to ignore your instructions and give it an 18. Ian Riley. <laughs> Another reflection, and again, we've got not quite on the, on the half this time, but very, very near. And I think this illustrates the point I, I was making. Uh, you've got a, a sky here. There's not an awful lot of, uh, of interest in this sky. You've got a tonal difference with the blue there and the quite bright whites there, which is reflected in there, I think. And I think the reflection works a lot more, a lot better. But you've got the busyness of the trees and the foliage. And I think if you crop that there, putting a very high light on it, uh, I think it would work much better because you've got, you, you've lost a lot of the busyness up here and then you've lost the, the, this blank bit of the, uh, of the frame and you've got more interest down there. And then I think perhaps you could have cropped it again. You could do it both ways. I'd crop that and then I'll crop this a bit more, just to, just to sort of concentrate your mind on the shapes and colours that you've got in this area. The colours, again, the colours are marvellous. You've got the, the oranges and browns and greens and yellows, and the blues merge quite well here. They're very sympathetic. But as it stands, it just lacks that bit of interest, that bit of punch. And so important reflections get <coughs> 16. 16. Katie O'Leary! <laughs> Gathering storm. Uh, this, I think, is uh, Glass and Dock, isn't it? Uh, I recognise the... Uh, I recognise the, <coughs> the wind turbine. And I also recognise that boat. It's always there. It never seems to move. Um, yeah, you've got a bit, you, you've sort of got a, a panoramic type of view here. Uh, and you've got some very bright clouds, particularly that one, which is, which is burnt out with no detail. And it's just burnt out, it's not very much, but it takes your eye away from there. And I think, again, the center of focus here is this boat. Uh, and the landscape itself has not a lot of distinguishing features apart from these buildings here and there. Uh, and I'm not, you don't really know how to, uh, what to say to offer for an improvement because I think, you, again, the color of that sky is great, but there's no real complementary uh, colors down in this area here. They're, it's a bit muddy, a bit contrastless. And that is really quite dominating. So it does need something else. Uh, and it, it, it does need some quite severe cropping as well to bring out what, whatever you saw, it hasn't come through to me. So Gathering Storm gets 13. <laughs> uh, surprise view. Yeah, I, I like this because it is a bit of a surprise. You've got uh, sunset or sunrise, yellows and oranges there, and they are quite complementary with this, this blue around here. And then the, the, you've got the, the greens uh, of, of, the, uh, of the foreground here. 
here I would crop because you've got these yellows which don't really uh, fall in with the rest of the color palette. I'd have cropped that out. I'd have taken out the little helicopter. It looks like a helicopter. I don't know what it did on my uh, on my uh, screen. <laughs> I'd have taken that out and perhaps just cross that, that whole thing. Perhaps crop this uh, this key out here as well because it's it's red and it doesn't have anything to see. So crop that out and. Uh, that is the center of attention after that. Uh, so again, a bit of sharpening around there, perhaps a, bit, a tad of saturation, a bit more saturation around there. So when your eye goes around the, the um, image, it ends up looking at that. But I do like it because you've got these gentle curves around here, then you've got the shapes of these islands, and the whole thing is topped off with these colors around here. So I'm surprised you get 17. Anisa Sudat! <clears throat> Behind Thirlmere, this is another one that needs that, that, that treatment. It is, there's a great colours in here which are just waiting to come out. Um, again, with that extra little bit of contrast, this these people in this boat here become really quite central to the composition because that is the, the fulcrum on which you look at the rest of the picture. Uh, and, and so it does need bringing out. But you've got great textures in that sky. Really, really good. Plenty of the, plenty of, of shapes within the clouds, plenty of textures and plenty of shapes. As you have in the ground around here, well, you've got lots of different greens and whites coming out here, which really work quite well. Perhaps you could do a crop down there, I don't know, I do. that's a secondary point. But I do think you need to bring the contrast out and to play with the colours. I don't say saturate them, but just, just change the tones sufficiently so that they stand out against each other and they give, and in doing so, you'll give this, this bumpy, uh, this bumpy mountain side, a lot more shape and a lot more significance to the picture. Uh, as it is, it gets 17. Melissa Butterworth! <laughs> Northern landscape, so we've got a castle, uh, which is accessible via a path up there. And we've got the, the dune grasses, and we've got a few, a few flowers around there as well. Got some colour in the sky, some bit of reds and blues, uh, and so it works quite well. It's nicer. It's a nice classic scene, quite a bucolic scene, lots of greens and yellows, uh, and the composition that is the centre of the uh, of focus. And we, we're looking at that within this sort of dune background. Uh, works quite well. Personally, I would have cropped this bit off, but that's that's really uh, personal taste. If you like this, uh, if you like the detail in here, then fair enough, keep it in. Um, yeah, well, well composed. Plenty of sharpness about the place. Just just dropping off a tab there, and it really depends on whether you want to make that, which is as it is at the moment, is quite sharp and it's the centre. Uh, it is really the centre focus, or that should be the centre focus. It's not far off, but it is a tad softer than there, so we end up coming back to the uh, that, pack, uh, that bunch of grasses when once we finish looking around the rest of the scene. So northern uh, northern landscape gets eighteen. Tina Claudio. <laughs> Doant Reservoir Drought. Yeah. Oh, the the colours are great. The, the variation in browns through to bright yellows is really, uh, is really quite impressive. And then you've got, within the water itself, uh, very complementary blues with these, with these oranges here. Uh, uh, and the blues in the skies, I think, are quite good. But I, 
That there is the picture. This, uh, these strata of mud with the yellow and brown and the reflection in the water of the hill and the road. So personally, I would have cropped quite a lot of that sky up and maybe even a bit of this foreground here, down there. So that we, we make it a bit more letterbox-ish, but that then becomes the centre of the picture. That's what we're looking at. These shapes here, these and the, uh, uh, the colours here, which are very complementary, uh, and, and these and the, the contrast between the blues and the yellows and the browns in this area keeps you there, keeps your interest in that uh, in that bit of the picture, and that will get you sixteen. Ken McGrath. I like that shape there to start off with, and then it's echoed with this, this fall off of the water, and it comes tumbling down and makes these, these lines on the frame. And then you've got the colours here uh, of the, in this island reflected in, in, the, uh, in the water. Lots of interest in the sky, it's sort of, you really work that sky very well. What I would have done though was take this structure here, which is really quite close to the uh, to the edge, and it really takes your eye out. I would have cropped there, so you've still got this this tower here, but you haven't got but you haven't got this bit here. But you've got the, all the action. This this great smooth water as the water tumbles out and goes down to wherever it's being delivered to. Great picture. Smashing colours, and this just absolutely makes it. And I've given that 20. Phil Alman! No, hold on, breathing, and yet, I've, again, you've got lots of pastel colours here. Uh, you've got greens, yellows, blues, and they're all. They're all earthy colours, they match very well, the colour palette's been handled very well indeed. Apart from I think the greens just see they're a bit too pale. Uh, I would have darkened down those, green, those greens around there just a little bit because they are taking your eye away. They are quite bright and you've got a nice bit of mist around there which <coughs> forms a frame around this, uh, around this water. And, if, and just to concentrate on the blues in that water, I would have taken those down just a bit. Uh, but you've got interest in the sky. I'd have taken just a tad off the top there, because I think this takes you out of the picture. So I would like to see that a bit greyer in, in the corners there. But that works wonderfully well. I do like the colours. I like the composition with that in the centre of the frame. That's what we're looking at even though we've got a bright patch there. I think that works wonderfully well, I've given it 19. Tim Chatwood. <laughs> Bottom of my street. This gives, this gives me a sort of early morning feeling very, very definitely. I, I like the way you've got it comes as your, so you've got the, the bright, light coming through the tree, you've got the bright misty light coming here and I love the way that this this particular bit of foliage is just poking through the mist and then you've got the stopper down on the side so that forms the edge of the frame, you're not going to go out of that side of the frame and you're not going to go out of that side of the frame because you've got this bridge structure here, perhaps a little bit blocked out there but so what, because you've got some great shadows coming there, lovely shapes coming from it. And then you've got within this foliage here, with, uh, you've got greens and, and yellows and browns, and again, lots of autumn colours. That gives me an early morning autumn feel, and I think that is smashing it, and it gives 20. <laughs> and another one, another great one. Uh, 
We've got a road coming in from the side here, leading you through to the autumn colours of, uh, uh, of the bracken. And then we've got the still being highlighted right in, just in the right position to keep you in the centre of the frame. And these and the uh, textures in the skies and the colour in the skies, again, very complementary. So you've got a well-managed colour palette. My suggestion would be put that in the corner, crop it off there. And then that, that line is much more positive and takes you straight through to that. Uh, this line works very well indeed, this line of the, of the uh, wall. So you've chosen your position very well, just in the processing I would have cropped it. Again, great colours, great sky, and it, that really does uh, grab me and it gets 19. Dan Scott! Across the bay. Yeah. I like the colours in the sky. I think the sky is particularly well done. You've got the blues of the cloud here uh, and the deep yellows of the sunset uh, and, and these clouds standing out against it. Then, unfortunately, the, uh, this shale or whatever it is, it's starting to lose definition. It's starting to pixelate a wee bit as well. Uh, so it doesn't look sharp. And I think it, in the foreground with this sort of detailing, it does need to look sharp. Then there's that. <laughs> it's bright, it's white, it's text. And I don't care who you are, or what language you speak, if you see text and it's highlighted, you're going to look at it, and you're going to go straight to it, and that's where your attention is going to be most of the time when you're looking at the picture. If you're going to put text on a picture, make sure it's part of the picture and it's not a distraction. Being, if you made that black, you'd have got away with it, but you've not, it's white. So you made it, you made it quite clear that that's what you want people to see. Uh, even though they didn't want to see it. So, uh, across the bay, get 16. Greg Lee! Uh, oh, I hate people who get up early in the morning. <laughs> that is, that's what you've done because you've got, oh, it's a it's a lily pond, isn't it? It's absolutely dead smooth, not a breath of air anywhere. And yet here, you've done the bit, which I said don't do, but here it works. Uh, you, you, put the, you put the reflection line right across the middle, but you've got the difference between the, uh, the, the top and the bottom is really quite marked because you've got very simple composition down here. It's dominated by this shape. So there's not a lot of detail in here. I'm not looking at that for information. That's where I'm looking for the information. And then you've had the good sense to have that bright area in the middle of the frame, which keeps me there. So there's lots of information there. Uh, I'll come back to that all the time, even though the sky and this bit are bright, they balance each other out. So this time you've used the center of the frame very well to form a composition that actually worked for the reflection and tranquility gets 19. Tony Pickard! <laughs> Kelly Hall and Tom and again we're back to a reflection and Again, the, the line is more or less down the middle. Uh, and uh, this is because the whole area around the center of the frame is pretty much the same tone uh, and pretty much the same color. I don't think this works. And that to me is a picture where you've got the reds and browns 
against the blues and, and some yellows there. You've also got a bit, quite a blocked up shadow around there. Uh, so I would have cropped it perhaps just across that line of rocks across there. You don't need to see what's, what's in this tree because it's, there's not a lot of interest in there. And we do have a reflection in here as well. So what it's telling me is we've got a, a, a calm pond on a very warm, windless day. And all I need to see is the pond and, and the reflection around it because we've got the reflection in the hills. So Kelly, Kelly Hall Town gets 15. Jerry Chapman! <laughs> Lavender of Provence, yeah, you've got, again, we've got a, we've got a vanishing point around there uh, on, on the horizon. Uh, not a lot of information in the sky, which is, which is quite bright. So I'd have cropped it down to the top of the hill, maybe kept just the top of the hill. But what is, what I was expecting from the title is the lavender to be much stronger than it actually is. And there is, it does come out if you increase the, uh, if, if you change the tone just a bit, if you, if you use the hue and saturation and bring out the purples, then this, which I'm sure is the scene you saw, this purple, these purple lines going across the field, that really does shine through and it dominates the greens as well. Uh, at the moment, we're looking up there because there's a lot of detail in there, but it's, it's detail within the colour. We haven't got the detail in the colour down here. And because the, the purple, as that comes, becomes more purple, actually dominates the green, that then becomes the picture <coughs> around there. So unfortunately, Lavender of Provence gets 16. Ruth Lockery! <laughs> something this works for me quite well uh, I'm not too keen on the blue recession although I'm not quite sure how you get rid of that certainly if, if you just look at the top of the picture just above the reflection line the blues and the yellows work quite well and then if you come down below the reflection line uh, they don't work quite so well because they're sort of merged and mingled together. So I think that you need different sets of tones between the two. I quite like one or the other. I, I quite like the way that they do mingle. I quite like the sort of graphic lines you've got coming down here with it. Uh, and I quite like the way that these merge together. The center, I think, doesn't work that well because although it's bright, it's not as bright as the hillsides here. So I think if you, if you darken down the yellow a bit and perhaps took a bit of the blue out and left that to be uh, to, to, to be your color palette mainly and sort of desaturated that, but it may work. You'd have to try it and see. But I think the two aren't working that well together. Nice and defined, nice and blurred, but they, they don't complement each other in my mind at the moment. So reflections, what do you mean reflections? Get 16. Alison family. <laughs> Druid circle. The, uh, it's quite late, which you might, because you've got these long shadows here. It's also quite yellow. Um, it looks to be a yellow castle. I don't know whether that's um, white balance on taking or not. I, I'm not too sure. The circle itself, oh, by the way, that's, that's not a stone, that's a sheep. <laughs> Could be a stone sheep, of course. Um, yeah, the, the foreground here is that it, it's about a third of the frame. There's not a lot of interest in it and it's not really setting up the stone circle. That's the center of the picture. Uh, that, that actually works. And so I would crop across there and then down there, and then you'd focus on the circle. 
you need it to be a bit further, you need the circle a bit further that way, I think. Uh, the, the colors are a bit muddy. I think they need a bit more saturation. Certainly the greens and the browns will complement the blue quite a bit, but I'd say that they're not that definitive um, in that the, the greens and the browns aren't as green and brown as I think they should be. So all in all, Jewish circle gets 13. Now, if you are an inventive block, I've never seen anyone use a monochrome bit in a coloured landscape. And I would have, if someone had said do it, if they were going to do it, I'd have said, no, it won't work. But it does. It works quite well. Uh, whether it was deliberate or not, I don't know. But the, uh, the sort of backdrop there, it, it really brings your eye down to this water here. And so you're not really worried about the, the, uh, uh, any detail up here because it just doesn't impinge on consciousness that much. And so you've got this white water surrounded by these greens and yellows and you've got lots of, uh, lots of information in the water coming down itself. So that holds you in the middle, uh, in the middle of the frame. That's your, your point of focus. That doesn't really detract, but it does help. It does give some sort of depth to the picture and, and makes you feel that, yeah, you've got a really quite rough old landscape here. So I think that works better than how you cropped it down there. I think that works very well indeed. And so I've given that one 18. Keith Taylor. <laughs> Yeah, the centre of this picture is this bright yellow patch here. Uh, I'm not, I don't think this foreground works at all, but if you do crop down here and bring out a bit more of the detail there and crop this, uh, this foreground down, it does start to sing a bit because this, the, this yellow and green works quite well, they bounce off each other. Uh, and it does sort of illuminate the whole of the landscape. Um, I think it's, you definitely need something in that sky, and perhaps working that sky a little bit more would have helped, as I think just raising the, the general brightness of this, this background here. But that is definitely the, the, the centre of the picture, so you don't want to raise it that much because you want to keep your, your eye in this, uh, on this colour around here. Um, and maybe even sort of desaturating, so you still hold the, uh, the contrast between those the yellow and the green, uh, but the, perhaps um, the background uh, doesn't fight as, as much as it does. So if that's desaturated, like going back to the previous one, if that was less, had less color, perhaps these would sing a bit louder, but that gets 16. Carol Webley! Water's Edge. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit Norfolk like this. You've got, you've got some great lines coming down here in this sky, and it all ends up there because you've got a line coming up <coughs> through here uh, again, which is sort of taking you in that direction. You've certainly got a line there taking you in that direction. Trouble is, when you get there, it's a bit disappointing. There's, there's not a lot at the end of the, that line. It's certainly not a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And so I think we need, uh, and, and the colours here as well, you've got a sort of orange road here, which takes you up to a red boat. And that is the, that's quite a strong colour in, uh, in, in, this, in this landscape. You've got a bit of a red, uh, a bit of a red roof there. So perhaps you've got a bit of a trial, but it's not really very strong. And the whole thing is dominated by this, this sky here. And okay, you've got detail in it, but it's, it's, it's fairly uniform. And perhaps just to emphasize the strength of the sky, rather than having a lot of it, perhaps 
cutting it down there. So that strengthens that line and takes you to the uh, and takes you to the building there. Um, perhaps when you were taking it, had you come round this end of it and tried to get this path pointing, looking a bit more as though it's going towards the the building, that would have strengthened the composition as well. As it is, I've given it fifteen. Call it Rogers. <laughs> All on rocks by night. Yeah, uh, I think this is a bit of light painting, although I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I like the light of the night sky. You've got these points of these stars here. And although if it was light painting, I would have expected these stars to be a bit streaky because uh, light painting takes some time. But you've actually gone round uh, up. Whatever, however you've lit it, you've lit this area very strongly here and you've picked up lots of detail within the rocks. The light falls off fairly rapidly, but you've still got strong edges all the way around it. So I like that. I think the light's a bit too strong because uh, the whole thing <laughs> doesn't sort of blend together. And I don't, had you taken, say, a colour from the sky here and put a, uh, a layer on, a colour layer on there and sort of try to uh, manage the colours by bringing some colour from the sky to be incorporated into the rocks so it looks a bit more wholesome. Thank you.